Hello fellow cinephiles, Film Guru here. For those who are new to the channel, my name's Sean and I'm known as Film Guru. And only I started this channel to, to have my say on particular movies and TV shows as, a variety, as well as a variety of other film content. So thanks for joining me today. I'll be reviewing The Empty Man. This was directed by David Pryor and stars James Bridge Dale, Sasha Forlova and a variety of others. So this review might contain some spoilers, um, but I'll try not to give too much away if you haven't seen the film. And I'm introduced to James Lesprober, played by James Bridge Dale, an ex-cop who after the disappearance of a friend's daughter, Amanda, played by Sasha Falova, begins to investigate, trying to track down her whereabouts. He comes across a secretive group and believes they, they know why Amanda has disappeared. Encountering the group causes him to see and experience things he can't explain. This all leads to a shocking discovery. This film was far better than I was led to believe. I found it really interesting, engaging. I thought the concept and idea behind the myth of the empty man and, and how that sort of works was really great. I, I like was sort of thrown into this world. I, I like that there's not your sort of average creature feature type of film. It's really a, a movie that is more of a drama thriller than, than a horror, straight out horror, which I found kind of refreshing. It has a sort of more supernatural kind of feel to it. And there's sort of a spirituality there as well in regards to the idea of how the, how the empty man is created and how that sort of myth works. And I thought this really elevated this above all the other films that we see in this particular genre. And I'd go as far as to say there's kind of a profoundness to this film that I didn't expect, that I think a lot of people missing just on the surface, but there's a lot going on in this film. There's a lot of depth. It's talking about really interesting and high concept things, which I thought was great. It looks at this thing called Tulupa, thought forms, which is a concept of mysticism and paranormal, of a being or object which is created through spiritual and mental power. So it's the idea of bringing something into reality that didn't exist before through thought. And I thought this was really interesting. The book that it sort of looks at this sort of thing, it's sort of, I guess the movie sort of, the myth around it's kind of based on, it was written by Charles Webster Leadbeater. And he was sort of into that mysticism and stuff like that. And, and this was the idea, the idea of creating something out of nothing. And that's what this whole film hinges on. I really like that. It has splashes of Midsummer and Candyman throughout it, which I really like. There's an unsettling feeling all, all the way through and a bit of sense of dread. And you're not quite sure what's going to unfold or transpire. It also felt a little bit like Stephen King in just his, the way of how King sets up characters before the horror begins. And, and I kind of like that, and it has that strong feel, and there's a sort of weird and oddness to the movie that you don't quite expect, and I like that as well. There's something about this idea of lifting the veil between what's real and what's not, and looking beyond our reality, and I kind of thought that was really deep and interesting. I didn't go completely into this, but it touched on it enough to give this film something unique. In many ways, it felt a lot like H.P. Lovecraft's sort of stuff. Not, not in the horror elements or this another dimension, but it's just that it's a mythos that H.P. Lovecraft created for his stories and his worlds that this film kind of feels reminiscent of. And this just adds another level of depth to this film I didn't quite expect, but I really enjoyed. I think all the acting is solid, especially from... James Bridge Dale, who's an actor I've seen a variety of things, including um, Iron Man 3. And I think he's a solid actor. He, he, he sort of has this feel of an everyman, a person we can get behind and follow on a journey, and someone we can connect to. Only a character we can follow through who feels very real and, and relatable. What I liked about him was we sort of just thrown into an introduction of him. He lives a simple life. He's gone through some sort of traumatic event and it's sort of had an effect on him. It looks at how he just, he's just by himself and lives a simple life. And when he comes into, into contact with Amanda, a family friend, and she starts talking about these things, you're not quite sure what's gonna transpire, but you feel there's a bond and a connection between, between these two, but you're not quite sure why. In these sort of movies, you always see someone make dumb choices. The choices he makes are very realistic. He sees something strange or weird going, happening, and he's like, no, no got nothing I don't want anything to do with and sort of takes off and it's that idea of making these choices through the film that are realistic and understand and, and it's sort of protecting him against what's transpiring rather than making stupid decisions I thought that was kind of refreshing for the character like this in this particular film and his search for Amanda is kind of feels like he's him trying to redeem himself for something that's transpired to do something right for once 
and to give his, his life meaning once. And he's just a really interesting character and has a really interesting arc and development through the film. He's a character I really enjoyed. The other standout here is Sasha Frovolva, who I haven't seen in much. She's sort of a newcomer. She's been in a handful of things. And she plays Amanda, this unique and quirky kind of teenage girl. And she sort of starts to talk about things in the film, which sets up what the film is ultimately going to turn out to be. James is like us, the audience. When she starts talking about these things, we think she's strange and odd, and we don't quite know what she's getting at. But as the film un unfolds, we get to see exactly what she was talking about. There's another scene with her that really stands out, I really enjoy it, where she's got a group of friends and they're on this bridge and they start to talk about the empty man and the myth behind it and the idea of blowing into a bottle to ultimately awaken him or call him. And the friends are reluctant to do it, but they do it. And there's this really great moment where she's sitting in the middle of the bridge, blowing on this bottle, and you start to hear these strange noises and strange things. And I thought it was a really great setup. It was suspenseful and interesting. We didn't actually see what was happening, so we didn't really know if it was really happening or was in their minds because this has ultimately happened within a story she's someone else is telling of what transpired. She's only in a handful of scenes, but she's really fantastic in all. I like the way it blurs and plays with time. And we return to particular scenes that we've seen previous and it shows us that scene in a different way and it gives us a better understanding of things that have transpired. This concept was so fascinating to me and I really was drawn into this movie and saw so much more than I thought it would. And I thought that made it such a more interesting, engaging experience, this film. It is looking at things and talking about things that are outside the realm of normal reality. This was a great way for a film like this to stand out with a different concept and ideas. The only couple of criticisms I would have with the film is one, the length, it's a little too long. It's over two hours, nearly two and a half hours. I don't think we needed a film this long. It does set up a lot and it sort of evolves as the film goes on. I just felt it was a bit long. And the first 30 minutes of the film we were introduced to this group high up in the mountains hiking and the event they experience and their interaction with the concept and myth of the empty man just felt kind of pointless. It didn't serve any purpose to the film, except introducing one particular character. But it didn't, never really added much to the film at all, and I just found that kind of disappointing. It just felt like they could have cut this first half hour out, could have thrown us straight into meeting Jane, the James character, and followed on from there, because it explained everything along the way. It just felt like this scene was put in to have a bit of a horror element at the beginning, so it wasn't just sort of a thriller, a sort of more horror-based film than it actually was. Otherwise, I enjoyed the film as a whole. Final thoughts. In the end, it's really about the idea of thoughts and how thoughts can form things and ideas and, and can form people's realities through the idea of mental thought and what we think and feel and believe is true ultimately becomes true and, and becomes our reality. I'm going to give The Empty Man four out of five. I really enjoyed this film. I thought it was well done, captivating, interesting, and I just was really blown away by this film. Anyway, that's all for me today. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please hit subscribe in the bottom. Follow me on Facebook and Letterboxd. Otherwise, until next time, enjoy the movies.